Hello. There is one industry which has been around since the time of the Babylonian. That's 3,000 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. And substantially unchanged since the Enlightenment age. That is the 18th century. It's huge, 5 trillion USD globally, kind of profitable and super regulated. Sounds good. Unfortunately, youngsters, and not only, don't really like this industry. I'm not talking about the place that many go to pray on a Sunday. It's insurance. My name is Pietro, and uh, I work in this uh, industry, which, as any many other industry, has been caught in the <clears throat> digitalization vortex. Um, I do kind of many things, some that are not so interesting for a talk, uh, but one that is really super exciting for a talk, or at least I find it really exciting, it's corporate innovation. And this is what I'm going to talk about in the next few minutes. Being Italian, I choose to have the recipe talk, so the corporate innovation pizza. And those are my five ingredients. So, number one, direction. Number two, space. Three and four are about doing things differently and different things. And number five, it's about failure. Easy, like a pizza. But how to combine them? This is uh, actually really how make a good pizza or where magic can happen. So let's start with the first one, direction. Now, the thing is that nowadays, innovation is one of the most abused words in the business arena. Simply put it, it's a little bit like teenagers' first sexual encounter. Everybody talks about it, everybody wants to do it, but actually not many, including me, know really how to do it. <laughs> In a more serious way to look at it, kind of serious. Let's call the corporate that you are working uh, for Mama. So the first way approaching corporate innovation, it is that you want to transform Mama in a startup, in a next tech. That means that you need to invest a lot in internal innovation. Totally on the other side, you say, no way. So, well, I'll use Mama as a cash cow, and I'm start buying startup, try to find the good one. But actually, there is probably a third one where I believe where magic happens. And this is where the corporate world and the startup world meets. And this is at least where we ended up. So, when you start, pick your direction, but this brings me to point to the second ingredient, this is not enough. You need to create in a corporate environment some space in order to avoid to get stuck even before starting. And what it is about, it's really about find some comrades around you. So somebody that you believe in actually doing, it really, really helps if they are not the, let's say, at the lowest level in the hierarchy in the organization, and once you get their heart, try actually to find their wallet. I'm speaking about money. You don't need much, but you need some dedicated money to start in order to avoid to compete to all the other priorities that the corporation have. And lastly, you need people, few again, but smart. Few innovators, few early adopters, somebody that gets it. Those three elements combined together should give you a safe environment to actually start. And then you can start topping up the pizza. So, do things differently. Einstein quote, if you keep doing what you have always done, you will keep getting what you always got, which might not be enough in the future. So what actually means? It means uh, experiment, new way to work. Human-centered design, for example, can really help organizations to finally address the real customer headache 
rather than actually addressing a date that corporations create to customer. Being agile, which definitely helps removing some of the bureaucracy and complexity that corporations tend to build over time. And then open up. Now, if you want to have a go to a different world, you need to start working with people that are already in this new world. Here I'm really talking about collaborating and co-creating with startup, with academia, with incubator. I'm not saying only sign a partnership and make a nice press release. I mean, it's, it's good, but it won't actually help so much, a bit. Uh, one example in this sense, like a few months ago, we worked together with the kids and the young teens in order actually to get some help, how to launch a new product on the market. I mean, kids and teens, they don't know anything about what an insurance is about. In one single day, they came out with a fantastic idea how to do it. That probably, as a corporate, it, it would have taken to us some months and some hundreds or thousands of spending of external experts. Second topic, do different things. They also can be progressively crazy, actually. But what is really important here is build up really, really quick your innovation funnel, the idea that you want to try out, the experiment that you want to test, and hopefully some of those can scale. Digitalization gives ample of opportunities on where to start. You can use technology in order to improve the experience that your customers have. You can actually launch new products which are connected with uh, things. And you can even try out a totally disruptive model that you haven't tried before. And another example of what we did. Actually, we spoke with our customer about a product that we thought that it was unbelievable. So we went to them and they said, I don't like it. And they told us what they like it, but what they like it, it was totally nuts for us to do it. So we decided actually to create a corporate startup. Four guys self-selected through an open uh, application process with no guarantee of going back to the corporate mama, put it in an incubator. In four months, they came out with a super customer-centric on-demand insurtech. I'd say one of the first one in Switzerland. And then I move to the last ingredients, failure. You cannot speak of innovation and not speaking about failure, which is really easy to say, but it's really hard to do, in particular in a corporate environment where we are genius in hiding failure under the carpet. One thing that you definitely experience in corporate innovation is a lot of promising prototype experiment, they simply get stuck or even killed by the immune system of the corporation. But actually, I believe that the biggest risk for corporate innovation is actually not to have great failure, because it would mean that you are not innovating enough. As well, it would mean that you are not testing if the system has become enough resilient to innovation. So, that was my five, but I've actually, I've cheated. You gotta cook, then, the pizza. What is missing is the oven. And the oven is the culture. Corporate and startup, two real different world. You have on one side, startup like blue jeans guys, super energetic, outcome oriented, want to take risk, sometimes with not many customers. On the other side, the corporate dude. Nice suit, process oriented, doesn't really want to take so much risk, but with a lot of customer. These two culture, they can actually clash, and it happens. But when they don't, the outcome is superior, and I truly believe this. Going back to the startup example that I did before, I'm sure 
that those four guys alone, neither the corporation alone, could have done what they did. But together, they did it. So, now I actually finished. I, I don't cheat anymore. This is really the, uh, the recipe. It doesn't taste as good as the one of my mama yet, but it's definitely tasty. So, for the innovators in the room, I hope it was insightful and I wish you good luck. For the ones that are thinking about innovating, do it and I wish you good luck. For the ones that are still thinking of not innovating, definitely, I wish you good luck. <laughs> Thank you.